Hey everyone, thanks for joining us on the channel today. If you're new here, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. So I want to take a look at the new Fly Simware Cessna 414 Chancellor for Microsoft Flight Sim. This is still a beta release, but they have been updating this constantly. So let's take a deeper look at this fantastic twin engine aircraft. All coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back everyone. So as you can see, I've got everything opened up so we can take a look inside and check out some of the detail they've put into this aircraft. But be sure to go down below and hit that subscribe button, tick that little bell and smash on that thumbs up button. Really helps out the channel. So without any further ado, let's start with the review. Okay, so before we get to all the goodies on the aircraft, I just wanna let everyone know that links for this will be down in the description. The price for the beta release as of April 3rd is $39.99 US. Now, I would assume that after this goes to a full official release, the price will go up. But let's take a look inside the right engine compartment of the aircraft. <laughs> the other thing I saw right here, look at the uh, propeller right here. It looks like it's hit the ground a couple times. But as you can see, the inside here looks really, really modeled well. I mean, it looks fantastic. Speaking of that, while we're here, take a look at the wheel chocks. We also have some tie down straps added as well to the undercarriage of the wing. Now again, I'm just nitpicking here, but if we get close to the tie down strap, we can see there's no hook to attach it to the wing of the aircraft. But if we take a look underneath of the wing, Man, I think that they've done a fantastic job modeling this. And the uh, landing gear and wheels, I mean, these things look modeled very, very well. So if we take a stroll over here to the front landing gear, again, I think the level of detail and care that's been put into this really looks phenomenal. Even if we get close in on the light on the front of this, it really does look like a piece of glass right there. It's nice. What do you guys think about it so far? Leave your comments down below. So they've modeled the pedostatic covers here and also the engine covers here. I guess this would uh, protect it from anything getting in the intake. Wow, you can even see through the louver through outside. I think that's pretty cool. So if we go up top, we can also open up all of the checkpoints on the aircraft too. We'll take a look at that once we get on the inside. The other thing that this aircraft is famous for are the windows on the side of this. So as a personal aircraft, you have fantastic views out of these oval shaped windows. Wow, the staircase modeling looks pretty nice as well. It really does look phenomenal. Now I did try this on the first edition and there was some autopilot issues uh, with the GNS 530. So we're gonna take a look at that today as well. Oh, and if you take a look over here to the right, we have the uh, GPU unit modeled. All right, so taking a look at the rear of the aircraft here, it looks like they have a mirror or something going on here because it kind of mirrors what we look at if you're standing back here looking at the front. But I'm trying to click on all this stuff, so nothing opens in the back here, but the actual modeling of everything really does look nice. You know, they've even got the hangers modeled here, all the curtains, even the carpets that are in here look period to the aircraft. Do I make you Randy? Yes. It really, really is nice. So over here on the inside, we have these little roll down doohickeys. So if you tap on the top of them, they will come down and your tray table's gonna pop out. So I thought that was pretty cool. And you have your little cup holders there as well. Now we also have one on the other side of the aircraft. So if you just click on that, it will pop out your tray table and your cup holders will pop out as well. I thought that was a nice little touch added there. Ooh, what's that little switch? Not sure what that little switch is. Click right over here, we can raise up the steps on the outside. And I would assume that if we go up top here, let's find something to click on here. Yep, right here, you gotta click on the handle and it will close the top side. And then you just gotta come over here, click on the handle one more time, 
and you will see that little green thing light up there. That lets you know that the door is All right. locked. All right, so as you can see, the modeling done back here looks really, really nice. So as we move up to the cockpit, they've also added some other cool pieces into the model here. So we've got a radio, it looks like a radio down here, and a little briefcase over here. Now we move over here on this side, uh, looks like they might have, uh, what's that, a coffee maker or something like that. One thing I did notice here that I really, really appreciate is that they added the folding armrest. That's so helpful if you're sitting here at the cockpit and you look down. This way it allows you to turn on the fuel valves down here on the floor. So there's one of the fuel valves and here's the other one. So with those armrests down here, it would probably be in the way you won't be able to see any of it. One of the things that you will notice here on the left hand side is we have a fantastic EFB tablet for the Fly Simware. If you accidentally close the tablet and hit this little top button, it's going to go away and you're going to go, oh my gosh, where'd it go? It's very simple. To get that back, all you have to do is click on the top corner here of the window and that'll bring the tablet back up. On the first page of this tablet, this is also where we're going to be able to turn on and off a lot of the outside equipment as well as open and close some of the doors. As I'm closing this down, you'll be able to see some of these doors closing. Also, a lot of the maintenance items you can close as well here from the tablet. Now, as I told you from the outside, that we have a full checklist walk around that we can perform with this aircraft. Before we get to that, down here in the lower left hand corner, we can also adjust the state of the aircraft, which we want to set it for at the current time. Down here in the lower right hand corner, this will put us to the next page. And this is going to show us some relative information of what's going on right now outside. So if we click over one more time, this is the pre-flight inspection order sheet. So if we take a look at this, everything is in numerical or alphabetical order. So all we would need to do if we want to check a particular part of the system is just go ahead and click on it and it will take us to that section. If we hit the pilot reset again, it will move us right back to our normal pilot position, and then we can move on to the next in the checklist. So as you can see, it is very, very detailed in the checklist, as well as the items that we're gonna be checking. So we're not gonna go through each of these, but you are more than welcome to go ahead and perform your walk around checklist of the aircraft. So if we take a look down below, it looks like we can click on some of this stuff, but it doesn't actually do anything. Let's go ahead and open up the toolbar menu at the top and click on the checklist icon. They have all the different checklists in here. So this would be where we would want to start. The tablet is going to point you to the correct checklist that you would want to do in sequence. And now we're going to get this thing started up so we can take a look at the GPS and see if it's following a GPS course now for the GNS 530. All right, so to get this thing started, we've got to get some batteries on and they're located right over here. There's a little flip bar there. We can just flip that up and then turn on our batteries. Next, we have the uh, magneto switches. I believe they're up here. So we can just get all those on as well. Now we're still on GPU power, so everything is already on. Well, dummy me. I forgot to turn on the fuel. There she goes. All right, we are fired up. So keep in mind, I'm not following any procedures here. So these are all the lights though. You can turn those on. Now, I just want to let everyone know that all of these do work. So each of the knobs on here, everything operates. Shut these windows and then we can let you hear what it sounds like on the inside with the windows shut. Now, if we take a look over here on the left, we have all the different gauges for our pressurization and they do work. So once we get up in the air, if you open a window or something, it will change the uh, gauge here. So I thought that was really cool for the level of immersion. And this is gonna be the uh, DME information for the range, the speed, and how many minutes we are away. And to the right of that is all of our autopilot goodies. Now, if you are not familiar with the GNS 530, we're gonna be doing a full tutorial series on this in the future, so stay tuned for that. 
All right, so the first thing that we need to do for the GNS is to turn us in GPS mode. And I just want to make sure that my flight plan is in here. So we're just going to hit the flight plan button. And there we go. Yep, the flight plan is activated. And we are also using mod for the GNS 530. So I just want to let everybody know on that as well. Links for the mod will be down below. And you can pick that up through the community downloader. That's a free download from flightsim.to we check out the documentation that come with the aircraft as you can see they can they will give you all the rpm and manifold pressures for your 20,000 foot altitude i will say that the pilot position that we are given here as a default seems to be just a little bit too close so when i go to pilot position as you can see i don't really have anything i can't really see that much so that might be one thing that you want to do is just set up your own pilot position just to give you a little bit more view here. Now the other thing that I noticed with the uh, GNS 530, you can see the backlighting really is not that bright. So one of the other quirky things that I found with this thing, if we come over here to the volume knob and start turning it down, look, the backlighting is also decreasing. So I thought that was kind of odd. Now, I would really like if we could adjust the backlighting on this a little bit brighter because during the daytime, it really is not that bright. But just listening to the sounds of this aircraft are fantastic. Okay, so we are just going to bring us up on the manifold pressure and we are going to drop our flaps down to our first notch over there. And we'll just put us up to 35 inch pounds. Little left rudder. And a slight pullback. And there we go. Now I did already adjust my trim and that trim wheels right here and there's our indicator right there. All right, positive rate, we can put the gear up. And if we take a look down here at the GPS, you can see what I'm talking about, about the backlighting. The other cool thing with the plane, if you want to get rid of all of these throttle handles, we can do that as well. So it'll make it a little bit easier to see all these switches and buttons. So if we go right over here and just hit that, it will get rid of all of those throttles for us. This is just a fantastic plane. If you love GA, I would highly recommend this plane. For a beta version, it's really, really nicely done. And I can only assume that it's probably gonna go a little bit more expensive. All right, so if we take a look at the GPS, we are just about ready to get on course here. So I've got my GPS in GPS mode, and now I wanna come down and turn on the autopilot. So the yaw damper is right there and autopilot switch is right there. Now what we have to do is activate the parts of the autopilot that we want to turn on. So those are right here in the center here and we can just tap on the nav and that's going to activate the nav portion for the autopilot. So it should follow any GPS course that we have. Let's activate our altitude hold and we just compress that right there. And as you can see, the plane will just level right out for us. So if we take a look at the GPS, yep, it looks like we are hugging that course now and there is no deviation from that. So, so far, so good. Now, if you are gonna be doing some night flying, down here on the center console here, we have our light switch over here for night. So if we flip that, it will turn on all the lights. Now you can adjust the individual lighting right here on the center pedestal. I do want to mention that the aircraft does come with three different GPS versions. The GNS 530, the 750, and the 750 XI, I believe. Now, the only thing is, for the GPS units, you do have separate liveries for those, and that's how you're gonna select the aircraft you want with the GPS that you want. So you will not be able to load into the sim and then switch GPS units. You will have to exit the sim, choose the different livery that corresponds with the GPS you want, and then respawn into the sim.
The sounds coming from the engines of this airplane are just magnificent. I believe that the crew over there at the Fly Simware actually have a 414 Chancellor to do all of the testing on. So the level of detail is going to be pretty well uh, based on that alone. All right, so now that we're back in the cockpit, I just wanted to talk with everybody and let you all know what's been going on here over at 2020 Flight Simmers. So a lot of you may or may not know, if you're on our Facebook group, then you're getting all of these live updates. So if you're not on the Facebook group, make sure you go down below and hit the link for the Facebook group and join up. This way you'll get up-to-date information of what's going on all the time. Anyway, uh, me and my wife had just moved into our new residence, so we've been kind of down for a little bit and we just got everything set up. I just want to let everybody know that the move went very well. We had some hiccups at the very beginning, and here in Tennessee is where we're located. We usually don't get snow where we are, but unfortunately, we got dumped eight inches of snow on moving day. Not only that, but it was that heavy, wet kind of snow, and wound up having three or four down trees, down power. We were without power all day had to get the chainsaw out and cut some trees down. So we were able to push through and uh, we got all the trees cleared, got the snow shoveled, and we got moved into the house and it, everything came out just fine. I must say that the graphics here in Microsoft Flight Sim are just fantastic. All right, so, so far so good. Everything seems to be going quite nicely plane's flying well. The sounds are just fantastic in this bird. Oh, have you not heard? It was my understanding that everyone had heard. Heard what? Brian, don't! The textures in here are just great. I, I can't speak enough good about them. The seats look phenomenal. Look at the seat belts look great. Everything in here just looks fantastic. So we're just gonna go back to the original airport where we took off right over here, and uh, we're just gonna check out the landing characteristics of the uh, 414. Landing gear is down, flaps are down. All right, kind of a long landing, but uh, hey, we made it down safely, and we're here. All right, I hope everybody enjoyed the episode today. If you have any questions, pop those down below, and let me know what your thoughts are of the uh, Cessna 414 Chancellor. Well, to all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up. We'll see everybody on the next one. Thanks for watching.